Okay, so this lecture will be on Head First SQL Chapter 6, and we're just going to jump straight into the content rather than the introduction. Uh, this is just meant to be more of a rehash than, than like a full class lecture, I guess. So what this chapter starts out with is it's saying if we want to add one more descriptive attribute to a table, rather than having a bunch of as you can see on this table, rather than having a bunch of trues and falses, what if we could just have one column that has the name of these rather than true or false for each one of these? So in the end, we would shrink our table, which obviously would optimize how fast we can query it and be better and be more easy to read. So this introduces a more advanced update statement. Um, as you probably already know, you can do update table name set column name equals to something where there's a condition. And to do what they're doing in this table where we make a column called category and then we name it whatever's true out of these movie categories we can use a case statement like we have up here. So the update and set is the exact same syntax. We can do set our new column name, which is category. And it's very similar to cases in other programming languages, although there is no break after each case. And so it's not as apparent that, that there that there are breaks, but we have a default case and we have cases that do not break down. So in this case, we say when drama equals true, then drama. So we say if drama is true in a row, so let's find a row where drama is true. If drama is true, then drama. And the then is what we set the column to. And so we set our category column to drama when drama has a T. So as you can see here, we have a T where there's drama, and then we have drama under the category. And we go through like that, um, no commas between the cases or anything like that. The indentation is optional, um, highly recommended though, because especially when you get into more complicated queries, that will help you out a lot. Um, Oh, yeah, so the other thing I wanted to mention is that there are no breaks. However, these cases are mutually exclusive in SQL. And so where you have uh, when drama equals T, then drama, if that condition's met, then you're done. It, it will not go through. It won't say if drama is T, then set it to drama. Oh, wait, comedy is also T, set it to comedy. Once it finds one of those cases, once it matches that, then it's done. And the same column that we were just looking at right here, you can see that drama is true and comedy is true, but the category is set to drama. And so the column order does matter when we're talking about cases in SQL. Now, the last thing about cases is that there is a default case, although rather than saying default like you would in Java, it just has else. And so if none of these are met, so if all of them, in this case, if all of these are false, um, see if we can find, okay, they didn't have any here that all of them are false, but if all of these columns are false, then you set it to miscellaneous. And then at the end you say end, and that just says that your case is over. Now your default case is not mandatory, but if you don't set it, then you're at risk for having a null value, which as you probably know, can trigger a cascade of errors that you don't want to deal with. So obviously a best practice in this case would be set it to, set the default value to something that is not null. Now, here's another important part of this chapter. It's ordering data. So if you've ever done a basic select statement 
on SQL like this, you just say select the column names from the table where, and then we just say the title starts with A and the category is family. Then that will output the title with the category if the title starts with A, but they won't be in any order other than the order that you put them in the table. So you can tack on order by at the end of your select query and that will order them in mostly a logical manner. Uh, we'll get into the more specifics of the order by command, but you can order it by that. By default, SQL does ascending order. You can also order it in descending order. And so by default, it would start with A, then B, C, D, E. With descending, you start with Z and go backwards down the alphabet. Now, here is a somewhat important list of the order that things go in in SQL. It's just showing you that numbers go before capitals that go before lowercase or yeah, lowercase letters and you have a bunch of special characters here and this order could vary slightly depending on what database management system you use but by and large um, the orders are similar. And that's more of something that you just have to memorize. Some of it's intuitive and some of it isn't too intuitive. So I would recommend referring to the book. Um, you'd probably be more likely to have a reference actually and have to memorize it, but if it's for tests, you might have to. Now you can order it using multiple categories. And just like you'd imagine probably it orders it primarily by the first category and then by the second category. And so in this case, you say order by category, and so it orders that. And then if there are multiple entries with the same category, it'll order it by the purchase date after that. And this is just saying that by default, it's ascending order, and then you can also use descending order by DESC, and DESC is also short for describe, but that's if you put it before a table name. And so if you say order by DESC, SQL will know that that's descending rather than describe, obviously. Now, there are more advanced features um, features of these advanced selects, one of which is uh, probably one of the most useful parts are these little functions. And they're very basic, but they can make life much easier in a real setting. So you can actually do something like this. You can say select sum of sales from cookie sales where first name equals Nicole. And that will say, select the sum of the sales from this one person. And so you, you should expect just one result that whose attribute is called sum of sales, and that just adds up all the cookie sales from the person whose name is Nicole. And you can do multiple sum queries or multiple function queries at once. You can say select first name comma sum of sales from cookie sales and we use group by and group by says for each cluster or for each set of rows that start with this name put them all together and you order it by the sums in a descending manner and so what you're saying is we want the the top row to be the person with the most cookie sales and the bottom row to be the person with the least cookie sales and we want to have two columns like we have here you want to have a first name and you want to have their total cookie sales there are a few other functions that will be useful um, I won't really talk about them because they're pretty self-explanatory it's implemented the exact same way. You can use average, which is just AVG, 
And there are also min and max, as you can see right here. And as you can see, it does exactly what you think it would. You can also use count. Um, this, this might be useful. It, it just uh, returns the number of rows in a column. And so you can say select count of sales of sale date from cookie sales. And this will count the number of rows in that column. If you want to be more precise, you can use the keyword distinct. And one important thing to note with this is that when you say select distinct and then some column name, there are no parentheses because technically distinct is a keyword rather than a SQL function. And what distinct does is it says, I don't want to see duplicates. And so it just chops out all the duplicates that you have. So if, so in this example, we, we're just looking at all the sale dates in the cookie sales table. And I'm not sure if you remember, but in the table that we looked at before, it showed there was a, or there were many duplicates of dates because we had a lot of people selling a lot of cookies on the same days. And so this just gives you a list of the days cookies were sold and cuts out the duplicates. One of the last topics that's in chapter six that I think is important is limit. This is a keyword that has two different uses and the two uses are pretty uh, dissimilar. And so you should probably take a closer look. This limit that just has the one parameter is pretty straightforward. It just says limit to. And so in this case, you would say do this whole query, but I only want to see the first two rows. It has nothing to do with ranking or accounting or anything. It's just the first two that match this. It is sorted um, like you describe it, but it just says chop out everything. I only want the first two. Now there's a second limit that might throw some people off at first. It's not necessarily difficult, but it's a little bit different. As you can see, it has limit, and then we have a number, comma, number. So what does that do? Just seeing if they, I guess they didn't want to put any supplemental materials there. Okay, so we have a limit 0, 4. Remember that like most languages, SQL starts at an index of 0. And so when we have two, two numbers, we say, I want it to start at this index. So in this case, it would be the first entry, which is this one as well. And the second number is not the second index. It's not like a substring function, which it logically probably should be. It's actually the number of results to return. So in this case we say, okay, I want to start with zero, but I want to only have four total. And so it's sort of like saying limit it to four, but start at this first parameter. And so for example, if we had this table right here and we said, how do I want to, or how do I print out just third place, just Nicole on this table using limit. And what we'd say is limit, and then we count, so it's zero, Brittany zero, Paris is one, Nicole is two. So we'd say limit two, and we only want one total. And this number actually includes the one, the starting index. And so we would put limit two comma one, and that would print out just Nicole here. And these principles are pretty important, especially for the next type or for the next chapter. Uh, chapter seven refers a lot to, to this as we're doing second normal forms. And these are actually pretty important. Um, it sort of separates the basic databases from the more advanced ones. And it enables us to use uh, what are called schema in the future. And obviously, again, this is not meant as in a be-all, end-all for chapter six. You should really read it yourself. 
but it should be a good overview of the more important topics.